Hey y'all, it's me Lauren from Speak From The Heart where I give you all things speech, language, and life. I am a licensed and certified speech language pathologist and I'm so happy that you're here viewing my newest video. And today I'm giving you a quick nitty gritty guide to performing a cranial nerve examination. Cranial nerve examinations are very important, especially in the medical SLP realm. It helps us with diagnosis and differential diagnosis as far as types of dysarthrias, dysphagia to an extent. So if we kind of get into what, like what are cranial nerves? What are they? What do they do? Why is it even important to me? Cranial nerves, I like to explain them as interstates. So, you know, there's a major highway that might be in your city or runs through your city or state and it's an interstate and it helps people get to where they need to go. That's the same thing with a cranial nerve. So they start at the brain and they run to these major muscles and help to innervate those muscles so that we can speak and swap them in, in a nutshell. So what happens is when these interstates are disrupted, so maybe the flow of traffic is disrupted Maybe there is a major accident on this interstate. Maybe there's a huge pothole in one of the roads on the interstate. And that's where we get disruptions, we get bumps, we get things not working the way that they should work. So with a cranial nerve and something happens like a stroke or traumatic brain injury or surgery, sometimes these cranial nerves are affected and they're damaged, which can cause difficulty with speech and swallowing, hence dysarthria and dysphagia. So, it is very important that we know how to test cranial nerves because it helps support diagnoses, different diagnoses, and it also helps with differential diagnosis. So let's say you see something during a cranial nerve exam that's not really lining up with your, with the doctor's diagnosis, you can talk and collaborate with other medical professionals to figure out what's going on with this patient. We are going to really dive into six cranial nerves, and obviously there are 12 but there are six that are mostly responsible for the muscle, innervating the muscles of uh, speech and swallowing. So we are going to dive a little bit deeper into those cranial nerves and I will also be demonstrating how you should test for these. I hope that this is helpful for people because, you know, as students, we learn about cranial nerve exams, but doing one is a different, it's, it's different, like it's very different. So I'm hoping that these demonstrations will be helpful for you. So yeah, let's jump right in. All right, so for this video, we are discussing cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal nerve, and cranial nerve seven, which is the facial nerve. So for cranial nerve five, it's important to note that this nerve does have sensory and motor components. So you will be looking at range of motion, movement of certain structures within the face, and you'll also be assessing the sensory component. So can the patient feel where you are touching on the face? Same thing with the facial nerve, it does have sensory and motor components. So you're looking at the muscles that are typically responsible for facial expression, being able to retract the lips, pucker the lips, being able to hold the lips closed. You're looking at facial symmetry, and you're also, when you're assessing the sensory component, you're looking at taste on the anterior, the anterior two thirds of the tongue. So for both of these, it is very important that you're assessing both the motor and the sensory component. That is going to give you information about that nerve. Let's see, how can we assess these two nerves? How do we do it? What does it look like? And yeah, let's hop right into it. We are going to start with trigeminal. Remember, trigeminal has sensory and motor components. So I have my lovely patient here today. Lovely patient. Miss <laughs> Leslie. And we're going to be assessing those cranial nerves today, sis. You ready? All right, so trigeminal. Let's do it. I want you to open your mouth for me. Just looking for the movement of the jaw. Does it deviate to one side or the other? <laughs> and it looks nice and normal, so you're good there. I want you to open your jaw, resist against my hand. Okay, good. Move your jaw side to side. Good, I'm gonna put my hand to your left, push against my hand. Very nice. And then I'll put my hand to your right, push against my hand. Good, good, very nice. <laughs> Clench your teeth for me. Good, I'm just gonna feel right here. Excellent, keep clenching. Good, good, any pain? Felt like I was at the doctor's office. Now we're going to assess the sensory component of the trigeminal nerve. So you want to have the patient close their eyes 
and ask them if they feel where you touch. You wanna make sure you do this bilaterally so you're really assessing where it innervates. So I'm gonna have you close your eyes for me. And you should have on gloves or like a cotton swab when you do this, but we're at home, my hands are clean. <laughs> they are clean. Okay. okay, close your eyes. And I want you to let me know when you feel me touch your face, okay? okay. All right, we're gonna start the forehead. Okay. This is making sure that you're assessing the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. We're gonna come down to the cheeks. You're touching my face. Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know, patient. And that's assessing the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. And then we'll also touch the jaw. I feel you. <laughs> good. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and that's assessing the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. So that's why the trigeminal nerve has its name tri, because it has three different branches. And so when you're touching bilaterally, that's letting you know the, and the sensory component of that nerve. All right. So, well, the next nerve is the facial nerve. And just like the trigeminal nerve, the facial nerve also has sensory and motor components. So we will be assessing both of those today. We'll have our patient do each of these actions here so you know exactly what to do to rock your next cranial nerve exam. So let's get into it. You ready? Sit. Okay, go. I always have the patient just look at me. So I'll say, you know, just look straight ahead. Why is I'm your- I'm trying not to look at you because- Okay, when I look at you, I just want to smile. Okay. okay. And you're assessing facial symmetry. So do you notice any asymmetry? Or do you notice a lip droop on one side of the face or one of the eyes drooping more than the other? So that's what you're looking at. But our patient looks nice and symmetrical today. So that's excellent. I like to start from the forehead and go all the way down the face as far as assessing what areas this nerve controls. So we're gonna look at the eyebrows. This is one nerve? Yeah. <laughs> Wrinkle your forehead for me. Good, and you're assessing, again, both sides, making sure bilaterally the eyebrows come in. Can you close your eyes nice and tight for me? Good, and if she didn't have on glasses, I mean, I would just ask her to take her glasses off, but I would also have her shut her eyes and try and open them so you're assessing strength there too. But we're just gonna assume that that all looks normal. Good, good. Can you give me a nice big smile? Good, and pucker your lips like you're blowing a kiss. Good, same thing, you're looking for symmetry, you're looking for any weakness. With the pucker, you're looking for complete closure of the lips, you're looking for complete rounding of the lips, so that all looks really good. So you look good, girl, you look good. good Your facial nerve is it's just on point. That's a good thing. Oh. I want you to frown while showing me your teeth. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> no, so, like this. Yes, good. All right, so now we will look at the sensory component of the facial nerve. So the facial nerve controls taste for the anterior two thirds of the tongue. So that is the only sensory component for the facial nerve. So what you wanna do is have four different, very different tastes or materials that the patient can taste. So sour, bitter, salty, and sweet. And you want to just put them on the anterior two thirds of the tongue while the patient's eyes are closed and have them tell you or express to you what type of taste it is if they can. So I have some Q-tips here. And again, make sure the patient's eyes are closed so they don't know what you're initially putting on their tongue. Can you close your eyes for me? I'm gonna have you taste four different things and tell me what you taste, okay? Open your mouth. What do you taste? Okay. And so for the next two, I'm gonna do my salt and my sugar. So you wanna make sure you have some water so you dip the Q-tip into the water first and then dip it into the salt and sugar so it will stick. So we're gonna do that. Okay, open your mouth. Okay, <laughs> open your mouth. Ooh, that was real salty. You're so alive. Sorry. Let's get the full effect. <laughs> and that's it. That's how you assess the trigeminal and facial nerves. <laughs>